All right, let's try that again. <laughs> I missed my exit. All right. So I was talking about doing properties in other areas, virtual wholesaling, virtual lease options, uh, virtual transactions. So let's start off with the basics of what I would do in my bread and butter area, or my area in Tarrant County, Fort Worth. Uh, so I would send the contracts to the sellers, send them via email, no big deal there. Uh, meet with them at, you know, let them see the contracts, see if there are any questions, okay, great. Uh, set up an appointment to see the house, meet the owners, get the contracts, get pictures, boom, there you go, sign in the yard, we're rocking and rolling. So that's what I did in my bread and butter area. But now let's talk about the houses I didn't see, the houses that were outside of my bread and butter area, that were beyond the 30 minute you know, drive, um, or somewhere around there. I would hire reps, I would hire them as independent contractors, I would hire reps that would work specific areas, specific cities, or specific areas, um, and to just give you an example, I would have a rep that worked, say, Arling Arlington and Mansfield, so even if you're not from the Fort Worth area, if you all look at a map of, say, Fort Worth, Texas, look at Arlington and Mansfield, Texas, you'll see where they are geographically. I had a rep that worked Arlington and Mansfield. Um, I would have a rep that worked, uh, say, Grand Prairie, uh, Cedar Hill, DeSoto, that area. A rep that worked the west side of Fort Worth. So I had these reps around the area. So here's how the process worked. It was very simple. The owner would contact us via uh, our website or my phone number, email. I talk to them, get their information, put the figures together, send them. Put the contracts together, send them. Call the owner, do you have any questions? Answer their questions, all right, fantastic. Um, Bob, our, uh, Bob is our uh, representative in your area. He's gonna, I'm gonna put you all in touch and he'll be in contact to arrange coming out to meet with you get the contracts and get pictures etc so now Bob my rep say in Arlington and Mansfield is doing the exact same thing that I do at the houses right around my area so then I email Bob or call Bob hey Bob I'm sending you a house uh, check your email I send Bob the contract so he has a copy of the contracts all the owners information he's got right there in his email Bob calls the owner Hey, you know, uh, Sam the seller, this is Bob, uh, leasing to buy. Uh, I was uh, contacting you about your property to arrange meeting with you and get pictures, etc. Now, at this point, I've already handed off the baton. I very likely won't talk to the owner again. I, I will, obviously, if I call if they need to, but um, they're not, uh, it's in Bob's hands now. So Bob goes out, gets the pictures, meets with the owner, contract signed, sign the yard, boom. He begins to market the property. He puts it up on our website. The phone calls go to Bob. They don't go to me. So all the calls from the buyers go to Bob, not me. Um, Bob shows the property. Bob has them submit an application. Application comes through leasing to buy through our website. I pull it, process it, boom, boom, boom. Hey, Bob, they're good to go. Um, or, hey, Bob, they're not good to go. But let's say they're good to go. Bob takes it. Uh, Bob lets the buyer know, lets the owner know, gets earnest money, bap, 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 closes the deal. Um, Bob then deposits money into my bank account, sends me a copy, or we meet, whatever. I get a copy of the contracts, the cashier's checks, etc., And that's it. And then I pay Bob for, for uh, as an independent contractor. How much do I pay Bob? Um, I started off paying way too much because I had the reps doing a lot more work and they ended up not doing the work. So I started off paying them 
But this is years and years ago, and they were supposed to do marketing and this and that. They weren't doing what I wanted. So for you, uh, I would suggest not paying your rep over, say, 25% max. 25% max of what you're going to uh, net on the option fee. Um, I would probably recommend closer to 15% of what you're going to net on the option fee. Puerco, puerco. There's a cop. Um, anyway. So say 15% of the option fee. That's the most I would pay. I'm sorry, starting off. Then you can increase that uh, as, they're, as they're working more and more for you, etc. Um, perco, perco. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. There's a, I never saw the house. I never met the buyer. I mean, I'm sorry, I never met the seller. Never saw the house. Didn't take any calls from the, from the buyers. Never met the buyers. In a lot of cases, never talked to the buyers. Um, it was it's it's a good system, a good structure to do a lot of deals that you'll never see and make money. So that's essentially the brute, essentially the blueprint for how do you do houses where you don't live, virtual wholesaling. It's the same thing, whether you know in, in the case in the real life example I just gave you, yeah, Bob uh, or my rep would be, you know, we'd meet sometimes to get for paperwork or for the cashier's checks. I didn't need to. We could do it totally virtually, which we did a lot of times. But you're taking that same blueprint and just duplicating it in, say, a far different area. I'm in the Fort Worth area. I can do the same thing. We do houses. Uh, we've got one now in, uh, uh, in uh, Phoenix area, Arizona. I'm not, I've never seen a house. Um, you know, I can do this anywhere, and you can do this. You can duplicate what I did. So, let's let's assume you live in uh, wherever, um, uh, Houston, Texas, or Atlanta, Georgia. So let's assume you live in Atlanta, Georgia, and you're going to tap into the market in Memphis, Tennessee, as an example. Okay. Well, you're doing your marketing, same as you are as you would anyway for the sellers. Uh, they contact you or your VA. They contact you, you put the seller price sheet together. Um, everybody watching this video should have the seller price sheet if you've uh, uh, been on our newsletter for a while. It's our seller price sheet that we use for the, for the sellers. Uh, put that together, um, the contracts, and there you go. You've never seen the house, never met the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller. Now you get an independent contractor. How do you get a, a, a rep for an area say in Memphis, Tennessee. There's a few different ways. Uh, myself, the first thing I would do is I would, I've got a huge list of people. I would just blast out an email. Hey, looking for a rep in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and I would suggest putting a simple, simple uh, questionnaire together. You can use something like SurveyMonkey or something. You're just trying to find out, you know, hey, what hour do you work a real job? A real job? Do you work full time, part time, whatever? Find out kind of what their schedule is like. Most of your properties are going to be shown in the afternoon or evening. Okay, so no big deal there. Um, the rep doesn't have to be available, just like you don't, 24/7 to answer the phone. As long as you can get back, or as long as, long as they can get back to the buyer or the phone calls, you know, um, within a few hours. So I would blast out an email to my email list. Another thing you can do is you can put an ad on Craigslist for a, a rep. Uh, you can even go to, say, a Bigger Pockets or a big forum, real estate forum. Say, hey, I've uh, got properties coming in around Memphis, Tennessee, looking for someone that wants to work with me uh, to show the properties. But you want to know ahead of time what you're going to pay, 15%, 20%, whatever. You want to have that set in stone. But those are just a few ways to get reps in different areas. Uh, for me, email blast, uh, Craigslist, uh, bigger pockets, any forum like that. You're trying to find someone that's going to take the call, show the property, meet with the seller, etc. 
So pretty, pretty easy. Now, another thing you can do is a seller, if the seller, the seller lives in the house, the seller can show the property for you. If the seller doesn't live in the house, the seller has very good acquaintances or family that live close by. Or you can also look for an agent in the area and that can show the property for you. Uh, and again, that's pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, I would I recommend looking for a, a leasing agent in the area. But again, you're gonna to wanna to know exactly what you're paying them ahead of time because they're, they're gonna ask. So again, just duplicate what I did and what I've done in uh, Fort Worth, and there you go. There's your virtual lease options, your virtual wholesaling, same thing. All right, guys, it is 3.19 in the morning. Heading to St. Louis to see my good, good old friend, uh, Joe McCall. Excited about seeing him and excited about getting some sleep at some point. So, all right, take care, guys.